Here's our repair panel for the rear window, the 41. It's got a little bit of rust in these corners. So, I'm gonna show you how I got it up to this point. There's the rust. There's the rust. So, we're gonna go through how I got it up to this point and making a wire for them and making a hammer for them and joining them together up to the point to where it really needs metal finishing and final cleanup. We'll be using MDF for this hammer form. Um, it's just more cost effective and the uh, we're not going to be making a whole lot of these so I don't need it to have a really long life. Um, one thing to know here is that I know the distance between the edge of this fence and the edge of the blade is an inch and seven eighths. We need um, 38 inches for the hammer form so i just subtracted an inch and eighth we got 36 and an eighth and use a straight edge you'll get nice good cuts um, this hammer form will need to be uh deeper than a three quarter inch so we're actually gonna be cutting three of these panels instead of the normal two so what i did to get this pattern i took magnets and i stuck this piece of poster board on the inside and i traced the inside of this flange then I measured all the way around, and I had three quarters between the edge of the detail and the edge of the flange, almost perfect. So where this damaged spot was, I traced it, and I traced the good side, and then I folded the pattern and made sure that they were symmetrical. So now what we could do is go to the MDF, trace this paper pattern, add three quarters, and we should have the edge of the detail. Um, with the pencil thickness and a little bit of gap I'm going to get from using a pencil, that should account for the material. So let's go to the MDF and we'll take a look. So here we are. We took and laid out a center line both ways on our piece of MDF. Then I took some dollies to use as weights and I held it down. This piece of pull max tooling is almost a perfect three quarters. So what I did is I used that natural line in the the line right here in the uh, tooling and I just kept my pencil on that point and then I traced it around and when I started going around a radius I just made sure that that point was always pointed to the center of that radius and I traced it all the way around that gave us our three-quarter increase for going from the edge of the flange to the actual part and you can see I'm not perfect on everything right now Pull it back up some. There we go. Our pencil has added just a little bit. So if I cut and sand that pencil, that's pretty much figured in my material thickness right there. So what I'll do is I will now cut out this panel, just one of them, and sand it to that line. Then the next thing that I do is I will match route it to the lower section. And once they're match routed, we can uh, go to making the top. Now the top needs to be even larger um, because it has to, this is where the part flanges and goes down, but the edge of the radius is back here somewhere. So our cover piece needs to be beyond the edge of that radius a little bit. That way we can hammer it down and go over that radius. So we'll get these routed, uh, cut out, then match routed and joined together, and then we'll move on to our top. Cut a small, drilled a small hole just enough to get the blade through. And when I cut this, I'm going to cut very accurately to the edge of the mark, but I'm going to take my time and go slow. Slow is smooth, and smooth is just going to work out a lot better. Um, the blade that I'm using is, uh, I believe, 10 teeth per inch. It's a down cut. Um, I believe they call it precision. Now, it's, it has teeth on both edges, and they're staggered. But they are down, I don't know if you can see it, but it is a down cut. And it has the teeth that are staggered, one for one side, one for the other. And it'll give you a nice clean edge on either side of the hole. It may blow out a little bit on the bottom, but I'm not worried about that. I want a cleaner edge on the top for now. So 
So I used 80 and some 120 and I sand it just to the edge of that line all the way around and uh, in the radiuses I used my uh, burnisher like a drum sander and my radiuses look pretty good they are right up to the lines of our uh, paper pattern so now what I'm going to do since I got it all nice and smooth and everything looks good my next step is going to be to join it to our base piece and once we have it joined to the base piece then I can use a uh, our bearing router bit, a bottom bearing router bit to match drill or match the uh, pattern. Glued it together with some tight bond, nice even clamping. And then what this mark is, I need to have alignment dowels or elevator bolts in order to sandwich all of this together and to keep everything aligned. Um, so I don't want any brads to be in the way when I drill those holes. I also don't need any brads in here where I'm getting ready to route a radius onto it. So all of my brads needed to be outside of that line. So anything inside of here I can use for the hold down pins, alignment pins, or I can do any routing that I need to do. So we're going to leave it clamped up with the, uh, the brads in it overnight and then I'll route it tomorrow. Um, and what I use, I just used a inch and a quarter brads so this is a bottom bearing router <clears throat> I have it set for just below three quarters it sits right in the sits right below on that second piece of plywood bearing is above the bottom it's below that top and uh, I'm gonna take my time as you can see I, I did pre cut out the center that just helps keep the router bit cool because if this thing was auging out all that material it, it has trouble relieving chips and it just heats up there's no point wearing the tooling any more than we need to so now we can match route that and move on to the next step so here we are I laid out our double stack pa panel on top of this one and I've labeled everything and I've traced where the hammer form was. Then I added three quarters. This is the clamp board, so it's going to go on top. That three quarters is the space we need for that radius to go down. The inner section, we're going to need that, so this needs to be cut very accurately. The outside cut is not as critical because it's only a clamping board. So what we're going to do is I'm going to first go in. I've already drilled my hole in between. I'm going to cut the inner section out first and be very accurate. Then I'm going to cut on the outer line and get the rest of it to drop out. Now this inner section will become a pattern of its own for the very bottom of the window surround, the window flange. And you'll, you'll see when we get to that point. But we, that's what we're going to need this for, so we need it to be accurate. So I went to the truck with the profile gauge and I profiled it in a couple of spots and it was all fairly even. We ended up with an <clears throat> inch and a quarter diameter. So I'm using a 5 8 router bit and I've routed the inside of our pattern with a 5 8 round over. So this portion of the pattern is done now. We're going to move over to the drop that we had from the cover plate. And I'm going to show you what I did with it. This is the panel from what was left over the wire form. And what will happen is we're going to drill through it all the locations for the gasket um, stud holes. And we're going to use this as a part so that we can bolt our repair piece in and line everything up and make sure it stays aligned. And that's why it was so important to save this piece. And it'll be used during installation of the new part. So here's the cover plate on top. You can see now why we had to make it larger so that we could get in here and work this down. Another thing that I'm going to do to the cover plate is I'm going to route back on this either a radius or a large chamfer. The reason why I'm going to do that, let's say I wanted to come in here with this hammer and I wanted to work this top edge. Okay, this hammer is not so bad. But if I was to switch to something more like this high crown, 
and I come into here, there's a chance that I'm going to strike that corner before I strike my intended spot. So if we run a round over, a large round over, or if we chamfer that, that's going to give us access, better access with our tools so that we can work that top edge down into the stretch. But this shows the importance of having that offset so that you can get in there with your tools and that chamfer will help with that. Um, another thing that I need to do now is alignment dowels. I think that I'm going to just use this on my fixture table. If I wasn't doing the fixture table, I would have elevator bolts clamp this together for my clamping force every so often. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four alignment dowels in my corners. Then when I put this into the fixture table, the alignment dowels will go through the cover plate, the sheet metal, and the bottom plate. And I can clamp it down inside the fixture table to provide my clamping force. And everything will stay aligned um, for when we do the actual stretching process. So... I'll use dowels in this because of my fixture table, but if I wasn't, I would use elevator bolts, but I don't have elevator bolts that are this long. So I'll lay them out, get those drilled, and get this routed, and we will go from there. So here we are. Um, the dowel pins don't need to be anything complicated. They're just a piece of quarter inch that I bent one side of and uh, put a little radiuses on the ends. And I tried to set them far enough out to where if I was making a repair panel and I had a nice radius here, the dowel pin would be outside of it, so I don't have anything to repair. Um, but I got the four dowel pins, one in each corner. And I've also marked a line and a line on the inside. And I'm just going to sand a little chamfer on that, like we had talked about earlier with my sander. And uh, this side of everything will be done. This is the beginning of the next portion that we'll need. We'll need a wire form to show us what shape and form this area needs to take. And you can see I've started making some of the uh, wires now. And they are really nice along with that shape. <clears throat> I just do it with two pegs in the uh, fixture table. And just small little taps with the hammer. Just little micro adjustments back and forth until I have them fitting exactly how I want it to. So I'll take you over to the table and I'll give you a, a view of what I mean. So it's just two posts in my fixture table. And we'll hold it like that. And if I want this to bow towards the table, I just come in at small hits. Move just a little bit. Small hits. And you can see how I'm already starting to come around. This is good for all the, the gentle radiuses. I could get probably down to a three inch radius or less. Certain things, yeah, I would use heat. If I was trying to form it, when I go to form it around those tight uh, five eighths radiuses, I'll use heat. I'll heat it up and I'll bend it like a blacksmith. But for most of what I'm doing, it's small adjustments like this. Now, in the other thing where I needed to go, let's say I'm bending on the X that way. If I need to bend on the Y to get an adjustment, I'll do the same thing. I'll just turn the wire. And now I can come in and I can create a three-dimensional curve that bends two different ways. And that's, that's basically what I do to create my wire forms. Now, where my little hammer marks and stuff are, I'll come in, uh, sand those down and polish it up. And we'll have a really nice wire form. But two pegs on the fixture table and a hammer and you're good to go. Right. You can see here I'm also getting the inner wire ready. And the next um, I'll be taking and using heat and I'll be getting these put in. I'll probably put um, one every six inches through here. And then I'll probably put two here. These are damaged in this area here. And this area here is damaged. So I'll probably just come to the outside of it. And that should be good enough. And uh, I'll bend up a bunch of those wires and get them in place. I may put a, um, this wire here is actually going to come into about here. And uh, the fixture is probably going to be about 36 by 18, which should fit over top of our blank. 
and then we can do whatever shape changes our blank needs in order to be able to fit the truck just by using a wire form. And this wire form will sit just above the lower wire form, but it'll be two separate pieces. Here we are, you can see we got our perimeter set and it's really good and accurate, okay? And I've also made the inner hoop that's gonna define this flange. And it looks like it's off, but the, there's a little bit of a taper coming out of it and a little bit of a roll. But it's sitting all back onto the flange, top and bottom. It's matching up pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fuse it and then I'm gonna take and just tap this with a little bit of a, uh, I'm gonna tap this with a uh, corking, caulking tool and knock it over just a little bit and I'm gonna tack that and then I'm gonna work it as one piece and get it to fit in there. Now, one thing I did do is I made sure my parts are ambidextrous. I turned them back and forth. That way I knew the damaged areas would be uh, identical with the good areas. And uh, I'm liking the way that it's fitting. So I am gonna tack it and uh, bring it out and weld it. And I'm gonna make sure that it's flat because that flange has to be flat for the glass. Then we could start making our little outriggers that are coming come out here and finish giving us that shape. And then uh, once we have that done, we can actually start making an actual part. So here we are. I've fused them together. And then just a little bit, a couple love taps just to clean everything up. And when I fit it in, I'm really liking the fit. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So now this will become the pattern for our inner flange. And then in, with the, in conjunction with that piece of wood from the, the uh, clamping plate, that one will have the holes into it so we can line all our holes up and it will be a double check for after we make the flange with this part. So this will go in and we can get our flange tied into our hammer form part, weld it together, get it all matched up. This will be a double check for that inner flange, and when it's all done and assembled, we slide that in, and we can drill drill all our holes. Use it like a bushing to drill all the holes. But um, I have to wait till I have a helper tomorrow so that I can make all of the other little ribs and chines that make this thing uh, memorize all the shape. So I'll get back on it tomorrow. So this morning I took heat and I, uh, I bent these tighter radiuses. I did that by using a piece of inch and a quarter tube. The same two pins in my fixture table. I just put a piece of inch and a quarter tube over one of them, uh, heated it to a nice red, and then bent it around it. Um, I'm trying to save time so I didn't film that. And I didn't film uh, fitting them up. But you just want to make everything fit nice and, and tight. You want to make everything match as close as you can now i had to have a little bit of clamping pressure to hold it in because these fit so tight into this frame that it kind of pushes just a little bit but we got a good fit now i may have to add extra wires in here or from there to there but as of right now i'm going to leave it like this start fabricating the panel and then we'll uh add as we need it because when we do the hammer form portion of it, that part is flat. And it's just adding the radius to it. And then what we'll have to do is we'll have to take and shrink and stretch as needed to make it fit this wire form. So as we're going, if we feel like we need more information, we'll put the wire form back onto the truck and then we'll add whatever wires we need. And that way we don't, we don't get too much, make it a little too complicated. Sometimes simpler is better. So I'm going to get some blanks cut in the shear. And we can start fabricating this panel. So I did decide to add two center wires for now. But I just want to show it on there. Like there's a little bit of gap, but it doesn't take anything to hold it in. But that's just holding itself on with no clamps or nothing. And we still got a really good fit. I could probably press it just a little bit here or there. But other than that, it's like that tiny little bit. But other than that, with no clamps, it holds itself on. And we got everything that, all the shape that this panel needs is memorized in that now. So 
I'm gonna get the blanks cut. We'll start the hammer forming process. And like I said, if we need to add wires, we'll add them later as we go. But I just wanted to show it being held up there with no clamps. So we took our wire form and just bent up a set of uh, flanges in the brake. And then take the kick shrinker and just slowly shrinking and stretching it until it matches our wire form. Now, most everything here is shrink to get it to come around. But if I needed to stretch it, I used what's called compression stretching, where I used a uh, uh, reverse curve hammer on the post dolly and use that to stretch if I over shrank it and stuff like that. And that's all it is, just a matter of taking your time, finding the right spot, using the kick shrinker, comparing it to the wire form, and moving on. So now what I need to do is I want to start being able to lay this into the wire form. The flange is too tall, so what we have to do is start putting the radius into it. I measured where the beginning of the radius roughly is, and I put a mark all the way around our part. And then I analyzed it, and I said, this center section is only a change in form. But out here on the corner, it's a change in shape. And I knew that I needed to stretch this rim in order to get it to come around, but leave this alone and leave this part flat. And it's just a matter of looking at it two-dimensionally and seeing that my the radius I mean, the um, circumference that it was at, in order to be able to move out and not affect anything else, it needed to grow. To grow, I needed to stretch. So what I'm doing is stretching that and working my way around until it fits inside of the wire form. So I'm going to set the camera up and show you a little bit of how I stretch that edge using the uh, reverse curve hammer. So I got my post dolly set up. It's a one inch radius post dolly. The outside of this is roughly an inch and a quarter, so it should be fine with a little bit of spring back. And what I'm doing is, I know that this section here, where it's straight, is just a change in form to get it to roll over, as if I was bending it on a radius break. But at the beginning of the radius, and at the end, I know that the outside of that needs to stretch. So the way that I'm doing that is I'm laying it in on that uh, on the part that's just a change in form with my green line roughly centered on the top of this post dolly. And I'm coming in and I want to hear that ringing. I'm watching the light line on the top of this and making sure that as it comes down and stretches into place, it's in line with the light line and flows through it. Now as I'm coming around, I'm coming up. switch hammers and I'm going to blend the two together now. See I'm starting to come around right on that light line. And it's just a matter of doing the same thing, following it around. Now I'm swinging from this direction. Usually I like to swing this way, and, but I'm using the other side of the reverse curve hammer. strike sound because that tells me that I'm stretching and you can see how it's starting to come around but we're remaining flat on this plane 
and we're not distorting this inside edge. We're actually coming around. that I get, we're going to take a file and we're going to metal finish them out. There you have it. That's how I'm doing it. And I'm stretching that outer flange and bringing it around. And you can see the little hammer stipples that I'm putting into it. And I'm stretching that around. And what I'll end up with is just like this, to where the radius has walked around it, but I've left this flat and I've left it flat in that plane. And it's just a matter of the sa just same thing, just walking it around it. Then I'll compare it to my wire form. And if I need to walk the radius back a little bit, I'll come in, I'll stretch a little bit more, and then I'll blend this back until it fits my wire form real nicely. We have a little bit of a gap right there. We're really good here. It does take a little bit of pressure to hold it in, so I think there's a little bit more that needs to be done. But you can see that little bit of gap is caused because it rolls off of that edge. And you see this wire is slightly below that, but this fit tight to the body. So that little gap is where it's rolling away from the body and coming into this edge. But we're sitting really nicely rolled into that edge. Here. See, we're sitting really nicely in it. Now, don't know if you can see it. You should be able to see it right now. We're rolled right into this wire, and we're rolled right into this wire, but it has like a flat spot here. I can come in with the dolly on the back side and hammer a dolly in place and blend that around. And that's what we're going to do. You can see this side looks much better. It radiuses in and radiuses it out nicely. So here we are fit into the wire form. We're pretty close. Now, you'll see a little gap there, but it has kind of a taper out, and that's why this one wire is slightly offset lower than that, because there's a slight taper out. So the corner of the part is right, and then it slopes out that little bit. I'm going to cut these off in the bandsaw, just above, and uh, we'll get working on making the other half of this lower and getting it ready. So I'll cut it and compare it to the actual truck and then move on from there. This is being held open a little bit because this needs more stretch. As you can see from right about here, right about here on it needs more stretch. Same thing on this other side from about here on needs more stretch. So I'm going to stretch that out and keep working it until it fits both the wire form and the truck. So here we are, we're really close. Now I can take this part and compare it to the wooden hammer form, just to make sure because there, there is about a number 10 sweep in here. Gotta make sure that it matches up so that uh, our hammer form will create the other half of this repair. So that's what I'm gonna do now is compare this to the hammer form. So I took and uh, drilled an extra alignment pinhole and then I took a marker and since we just have to wrap around that radius to get that radius to come to, I just took it, stood the marker straight up and down and traced around it. So now I'll cut that material out and we can hammer form it around this radius. So we've gotten it cut down, got our extra pins in, and got a good clamping force around it. So I'm mostly gonna be using a caulking tool, which this just old hammer handle, my wooden mallet, and two different soft hammers. And uh, that's mostly what I'm going to be doing. One thing we need to do is analyze our uh, changes of form and changes of shape. So this long straight is a change in form. It's just rolling over as if we put it into a press brake. Same thing on this side. The 
everything in here is a stretch. Everything in this area is a stretch because this circumference has to grow in order to get closer to that circumference and leave the rest of the panel flat. So I'm going to start with the caulking tool right up along this edge and just work it around. I'm going to work my changes of form and then once I have a little bit of tension in here, I'll start working that in. So I'll set up the camera and, and we'll get going. we have it. We've got our radius formed all the way around and we've let this part of the panel flat. So now we can bring it out. We can uh, do a little hammer dolly just to clean it up a little bit on our post dolly and we can begin to fit it up inside the hammer form. So I did two, use two blocking hammers. Here's some part numbers and uh, I removed the pins and all the clamping. We can pull the top section off. You can see we got a flat part with a radius onto it. So now what we need to do is work on getting this into shape because there's a number 10 sweep this way and then there's a little bit of shape this way. So I'm going to get the contour gauges out. We'll determine exactly what they are and then we can shrink the inner edge of this flange and that'll allow us to shape it this way and this way. So, got our number 10 sweep. As you can see, we have an air gap. So, we need to get that number 10 sweep in first. So, to do that, we're going to shrink on this inside edge. So, I'm going to get set up into the kick shrinker and uh, we'll get it right. Taking my part, mark the center line, and then one inch out from center. I'm going to be shrinking on the very edge of this just so that I can bring it around and get it to our number 10 sweep. It's all done with the kick shrinker. Here's my sweep so I can check. It's just going to be small little adjustments. I got a little too much I can always come in and sh compression stretch it just like we did the rest of it see I got just a little much 
So I'll set up my post dolly and I'll stretch it out a little bit and we'll get it to that number 10. Looks real good. There's a little bit of fall off at this very end, but I still have some shape to do in here and in here. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now I'm going to grab my wire form and we'll take a look at it with the wire form. So here we're starting to fit it up into the wire form. You can see we got a little bit of a gap here. We're touching on this corner. We have a bit of a gap here. So this kind of needs to come down and fold down. But in order to do that, we don't want to affect, we have a gap here. So this has to come up. There's a bit of shape in this way because we're almost touching, but we're, we're have a gap here in the open. So there's more than likely some shrink that needs to happen on this corner. And I'm thinking there's some shrink that needs to happen here to give it the shape that it needs. So let's go take a look at it on the truck and see what the truck tells us. So we're fitting pretty good here now. I do have a magnet under here just to hold it. But if we touch the bottom, the top pulls out. If we touch the top, the bottom pulls out. So it's rocking on this edge. The shape on the vertical is affecting it. So what we need to do is shrink a little bit in the center to get that shape right, and then that'll tell us what we need to do next. Like I said, more than likely, we're gonna have to shrink a little bit here to get it to pull together, and probably a little bit here to pull it together, but we gotta get that vertical shape right first, just like we did the lower. So I'm gonna take a contour gauge, get the contours of those edges, and we can get going on that. Slight bit too much on that one. The other one looks pretty good. So we're back on the wire form. I gave it a little tweak like this, but you can see we're already fitting better on both sides with that little bit of shrink. But now, if I pull this up, you see how we have that pucker of extra material? on the straight. So now we're gonna do a little bit of shrink in here to pull some of that material out. And uh, pulling that material out should make this corner wanna come up and lay in a lot better. So we're gonna shrink probably from here to here. And I think I might do that with the uh, tuck shrinking. So from about here to about here. So let's put a tuck in it and just see what the tuck does. So I took a shrinking fork and I came in 
and I gave it a little tweak like this, a little tweak like this, and I've worked it out. And you can see we've deformed it a little bit in here, and we have a tuck in it. But if we go to the side, hold that back into place, it pulled it up and in, just like what we wanted to do. Pulled it up and in. So we'll hammer this tuck around, and get it all planished out, and see what we got piece of stainless is just to keep the holes from the table from coining in with my strikes. But what I'm going to do first is close up the edge of this. It's got a little bit of heat into it, which is a good sign. I don't know if you can see, but see how it's closed up? And see the little shape that it's making on the end? Okay, so now that I have that closed up, I can ride it back on the table a little bit and then just crush it down onto itself. Now, I don't know if you can see the little things, the tattletales that it shrank, but now this has pulled itself and added shape to the part. Let me pull the other one down and see if we can see any better. So there's our tuck. It's got heat into it, so I know it's done its job. So we'll take a hammer and dolly, and we'll just planish that just a little bit to smooth it back out, and we'll check it on everything again. But that's all it is, is capturing that pucker of material and hammering it back down into itself in the material. So you can see we're fitting a lot closer now. So a little bit of hammer and dolly work to clean that up and just planish it a little bit, and we'll probably be right in there. I do have to pull that one little side a little bit more but I think we're, we're really close now. I'll compare it to the truck one more time and then go from there. Here on the truck, you can see it's a lot closer. It still has a little bit that I have to just tag it in right there, but it doesn't take hardly any pressure. It is seesawing a little bit, so I may have to do a little more shrink right here. I did uh, tap it with the hammer just around a little bit, but on this side, you can see that we've got it really close. So I'm going to leave this side alone. I'm going to do a little bit more work on that side. And then we'll start matching up our two parts. So we put it back into the wire form and clamped it where it needs to be. And now what I'm doing is just chasing it a little bit and blending the two parts together. Like everything else, if they don't blend together right, when you go to weld it, it's going to be, it's going to pull in a way that you don't want it to be. Um, another thing that I also noticed be able to see it, but see that little bit of wave. It has a matching one on both sides, so it's going to need another shrink right in this area. So I'll line up, I'll do that shrink and everything before we cut and final fit it. But all I'm doing is coming in and just blending the two parts together. Taking my dolly and going up underneath in the open gaps of the wire form, and I can take my hammer. Come in, blend the parts together. It's just a matter of working them until they get blended together to where when they curve into each other, they interlock properly. You don't want one to be out or the other one to be over curled. You want them to interlock properly. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I know where this open is, so I need to put a shrink right about here, and then I'm going to do everything evenly. So if I go there, I'm going to measure over two of my marks, and I'm going to shrink in here too. I'll do that additional shrink, and we'll take another look at it. Um, I'm also going to come in and make a mark right now if I want to trim this any. That way I can have it trimmed and ready 
I'll put some dicum onto the uh, panel I intend to join to, and we can have a really nice mark to be able to cut and trim those together. Got our shrinking fork, our tuck fork. And we're just gonna come in here, probably about like, like that. Something like that. We're just gonna form a tuck. Probably short of four it on the bottom side, but it doesn't matter. The shrink is going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to come in, same thing. I'm going to close. Let's see if I can film this right. Same thing, I'm just going to come in here and close this. You can see how it's closed down now. Now once it's closed down, come in with slightly some harder hits. And crush that down on top of itself. Now once that's done, we're gonna have to come in here. I can use this piece of stainless as a dolly. All of my uh, begin the metal shaping process, metal finishing process. Do a little change in form, and we should be right. I'm going to have to come in here and clean up this edge just a little bit more because of the deformation I had to do when I uh, put the tuck into it formed a little bit but I can clean that up and now it should fit much tighter in the uh, wire form and I'll do the same thing to this side and do everything mirrored one more thing before we go and uh, put it back in the wire form I took a, known, a block of a known height came through and make a mark all the way around so I can trim it and I'm going to trim this piece and have this piece ready to uh, match up to the other part. But just a, a known block and, and ride the marker right around it. Once we've trimmed it, I'm going to take a dreadnought file and file it real good. The filing is not really to uh, clean any burrs or anything. It's more or less just to uh, 
blend any highs and lows that we might have. We want to keep the edge nice and square. So we go to scribe it and uh, tack it. So we got our edge trimmed. We got our dicom painted on. But you can see I have a little bit of a gap right there. So I'm going to come around with the dolly in the back and the reverse curve hammer and get it nice and tight. Same with this little bit right here. We'll just come in and tighten it up. But I got everything held exactly where I want it. Then we'll just take our uh, scribe and we'll scribe a nice fine line all the way around it. And that'll get us set up for welding. Then we can put it back into the fixture and start tacking. gonna get us a nice trim line all right we're trimmed and we're back in the fixture the the wire form and what I'm doing is I'm going around and planishing it and drawing it getting it in place and uh, we're gonna get it down and into place and then start tacking it I'm real close now so sometimes when I'm planishing it'll move a little bit so I'm gonna take like this spot right here where it's really good and tack it and then planish it a little more and get it to where it's holding itself in position and then take it off the wire form, finish blending it and tacking it and then we'll get ready to weld it. So here we are, all tacked up, had a few boo-boos and had to add some filler wire in spots but for the most part it's just fusion tacked every inch. And now what we need to do is go and planish it and get the shape back right and uh, before we go and weld it. So I'll planish it, get it evened out, smoothed up, and uh, put it back into the wire form and back on the truck. And then uh, we'll be ready to weld. So here it is. We welded it all in one pass. Um, did use filler wire. I didn't fuse it. Um, there were a couple spots where I kind of had boo-boos, but it's all right. Any distortion in this panel, like the extra arc that's right here and the extra arc through here, these panels fit before we welded. All of that is caused by distortion from the weld shrinking. Um, that's one reason why we weld all in one pass. We're trying to keep a nice even heat affected zone and let it distort as we go. But now everything that we need to do is in the shrink of this weld and, and pulling that shrink out. I don't hit it with a sander and I don't hit it with a grinder at first. I hit it with a file and I find all of my highs and lows and I work on stretching that weld back out and getting the panel back into shape. And um, that's kind of just the gist of it. Like you can see here, we have a low with a high around it. So we'll work that area until it brings itself up. We've got a little low right there, right at the edge of the weld. So I'll file the cap of that weld a little bit and work that up. But if we were to take a grinder or a sander to this, you risk sanding both sides and thinning out between it. It's better just to kind of file it and work it up. And then once we have it worked up and everything's looking good, we'll switch to a sander. And uh, it's all just metal finishing. So part of the metal finishing that I'm doing too, I'm also taking the... Uh, 
profile gauge and you can see how much I got to stretch that out to get it to block out to be right I'm getting real close inside of here but down here I got to I got to stretch that weld and even some of it I'm doing inside the sandbag with a small blocking hammer just stretching that weld out and getting it built back up where it's supposed to be and once it's stretched out it'll relax and let the panel come back through here I'm pretty much done I just got to straighten it up and and get it cleaned up but now most of my stretching is in here little bit of blocking and you can see that it's already a lot closer so I'll plan it out on the post dolly now and uh, give it a look and then compare it to the wire form and to the truck so once I got everything roughed in and matched up with the sweeps and the wire form and all that I took and sanded it with uh, about a 60 grit and then an 80 grit and that's where we're sitting now and now is when the real metal finishing begins um, I'm not great at it. I'm going to make a video when I learn more and get better at it. But this part is roughed in and ready to take to that metal finishing stage. So I think that's good enough for now. I got to move on to some other things.